And, you know, for me being like a first generation entrepreneur, I believe that that's the inheritance from my adoption. So it's like, you know, like, so because I'll tell you, like one of my favorite parts about entrepreneurship as a believer is is working with the Holy Spirit and, you know, him kind of grafting into your DNA entrepreneurship and being a builder and things that have worked out that I'm like, they're like, where'd you get that idea? How do you know how to do that? And it's like, yeah, I'm faithful to read books. I'm faithful to listen to podcasts, but I also listen to the voice of my father Come on. and he's given me these ideas and giving me, you know, and that's one of the things about Paul, the guy I'm doing this kingdom impact event with on the 28th is it's like, when you listen to the story of like how he got the idea for Grant Cardone or, you know, Gary, Gary Vanderchuk, or it's crazy. It literally was like the Lord just downloading these things. And I love that X factor, you know? Yes. Yes. And I think what happens a lot is that people think that they're not attuned to God's promise. They're not attuned to the worthiness factor. They're not attuned to the capability factor and they limit themselves from, this is a really cool idea. I always tell people that I was actually the originator of Uber when I was in college because I started this drunk driving program called safe rides and it. it was incredible. And we were able to like get rental cars, from local enterprises and serve the wow. community with free rides every single Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night till all hours of the morning. And yet Uber wasn't around at that point. Yeah. And I was thinking, gosh, if this idea had been blossomed to life in a whole other way to be able to bring that to life there, it could have been done. But somebody else took it to the whole other level. I didn't even think to do that outside yeah. of my university. One of the examples that also struck a chord as you were sharing was the rat example. And another way that you can use this, it's a total, I haven't got to preach it on stage yet, but you can uh, share it with the V1 community, yeah. um, is this idea of the monarch butterfly. So my daughter just went to um, the place in Mexico. It's a mountain in Mexico where you get to see the, the super monarchs. It's the largest mm. monarch. It's where all of them arrive annually. And they're coming from Canada all the way to this specific location. It takes a year year long travel distance, but there are four generations of butterflies that it takes before the super monarch okay. gets there. So to think mm. that four generations, they know instinctively when they're born and after their parent has passed, they're now being birthed and they're going in the same direction to the same location. How is that possible? Even scientists haven't figured out how are they staying on track to this same path every right. single year and generations right. are dying off in order for them to do it. It's no different than what happened with Moses and Joshua, but they knew that there was a promised land. I don't know how it's passed to the monarch, but to think about us as humans, the, the differentiating factor between the person who gets the idea and sits on it and the person who gets the idea and acts on it is literally just activation. And faith yeah. associated to that. Oh, I love that. Well, I think about how the scriptures say that in the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant, the sins of the father, you know, will be visited upon the children three to four generations. But if you read that text, it also says the blessing. And I think a lot of times we focus on the curse, but we don't focus on multi-generational blessing. Mm. And so, yeah, that's so encouraging to me. I'm going to use that, by the way. I'll I know post. you will. Hey, just, just like, send, send some love. Camera. I'm like, you need to go follow her online. She's a genius. But yeah, I might unload that. This I'm speaking in Kansas City this Sunday. I might weave that in. So. Check it out. It's the super monarch and it's just, it's phenomenal. And so she got to see, she had to take a donkey trail up to the top and she got to see where thousands, like as far as the eye can see is super monarchs. And wow. so- Right when I heard it, I was like, "Woo, praise Jesus. That's a, that's yeah, a message. That's a word. <laughs> right. And so I love doing that. I love hearing anything that's happening in society. I love hearing any business trial or tribulation. I'm like, oh, God's all up in that. Let me tell you how. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I just think people, if they were to utilize the word, the way that we are stewarding it now, even yeah. in this conversation and not look at it as, um, this, um, uh, what do I, I don't want to say rules because it is a set of rules. It is foundational and principles are essentially rules for us to follow, but people look at it as ancient when it's right. active. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what though. It's like, 
I think <laughs> if you, the, the thing that I think people are experiencing right now is what mo the results that modern wisdom is giving people is not the results they want. And I, to me, it's like ancient wisdom being applied to modern problems is showing some good results. And the world's going to see that, you know, more yeah. and more. Uh, that's the same thing in New York City. It's like a lot of people are like, you know, well, why should I listen to the Bible? It's ancient. And I'm like, yeah, but how is your life working out for you? <laughs> like you've, yeah. you've done all the modern solutions and you came to me because you hate your life. So let yeah. me give you some tried and true, you know, the wisdom of the ancients. Like it was yeah. good for them. It's good for so us. Good. Well, I think through like happy, I think through hustle culture, I think through all of these things that people are uh, trying to achieve, even from a lens of success, even from a lens of finances, right? We're talking about money prior to and wealth is so much more than just finances, but God planted gold in the garden with intention for us to yeah. be able to utilize it as a tool, as a resource. Otherwise he wouldn't have put it there. It wouldn't yeah. have been purpose from the get go in the onset of creation. And to know that we have dominion over it versus yeah. what I think a lot of people think success, they get the thing. And what happens is the dominion is over top of them. The money actually That's owns it. them versus them owning the money. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's like the seek first the kingdom and then all yeah. these things will be added unto you. Right. One of the biggest things I struggle with as a pastor is entrepreneurs, especially in New York, who they they read all these books and they listen to podcasts that say you need spirituality. That's your what you're missing. Spirituality, spirituality. So they show up to church trying to plug in this element that'll make them <laughs> successful. So, yeah. you know, it's like, or the boss lady culture, that's like a big thing. Like we're yes. boss ladies oh. and we, we burn sage and like we do tarot and like, yes. we, you know, it's like this, they kind of bring in the spirituality. Yes. And I think especially a church like V1 Church, they're like, oh yeah, this is my new secret ingredient. Yes. And when they get into our environment, they realize, no, the true Jesus always destroys idolatry. And so like, that's really what he's after. Like he only asks you to give away the thing that has you, you don't have it. And so it's like, if you come in here and that, and you have an idolatry connected to influence, fame, that's what Jesus is going to ask you for. If you come in here and you have an idolatry connected to your house, your car, that's the very thing he's going to ask you to give. Um, and so I've really got to make sure as a pastor, the real Jesus is in our midst so because the, and, but this is the thing I wanted to, say this for those of you who are listening, what I, the secret I've been learning about the kingdom, yeah. especially concerning entrepreneurs, is that Jesus will always simultaneously demand that you destroy the idol and then show you how to righteously fulfill that desire. So good. So it's like fame is like, like not a problem. Jesus was famous, but if it's, if you come to him and that is your idol, he will simultaneously demand that you destroy it and then teach you how to righteously fulfill it. So you'll end up famous, but it's like, but you'll use your platform to elevate Jesus, yes. you know? Like, so you still, it's like you get what you wanted, but you don't want it anymore. Yes. Like, yes. That's the thing that because you're glorifying know. him in the process. Cause you're like, it's not even about me. It's not even mine. Just take what is what I have. Right. Because what I have is something you can't take ultimately. Yes. Right. Yeah. And that's the spirit. That's it. Well, because your identity, you thought it was in entrepreneurship, but actually now it's in being a son or a daughter who is on. So you're a son or a daughter who is entrepreneurial. You're not an entrepreneur anymore. Yes. And it's like, so you can take away entrepreneurship, but you can't take my identity. My, and you're I speaking into my testimony so good right now. <laughs> it's so good. I